Wow, it's great to see everybody here today. Uh, it's a beautiful day out on Green Tree and here in the Sofer uh, practice facility. Uh, we're, uh, we're obviously just a few days before the start of the football season. Really excited about that. Uh, we've distributed well over 50,000 tickets to the game. Uh, really looking forward to a great crowd uh, this, this coming Saturday as uh, we get our first look at the Coach Cristobal-led Hurricanes. So a lot of planning has gone on uh, within the department, certainly from the, the coaching staff and in, you know, our folks and friends at, the, uh, at Hard Rock Stadium have been hard at work as well. They had a couple of Dolphin games to get ready for, for this one, and I think everything went great. So uh, really looking forward to this Saturday. And uh, at this point in time, I'll just uh, open it up to, to questions. It's great to see all of you. I don't know that we're giving anything away free today that we, we have everybody here. But I uh, just wanted to, to make sure to have an opportunity to say hello and answer any questions that are, that are on your mind right now. Well, Dan, uh, I guess I heard on QAM last week when you were on the show that uh, 35,000 season tickets were sold. Has it jumped since then? Or? Yeah, it's jumped a couple hundred okay. uh, since then. And I think that it'll continue to move forward, at least for the next couple of weeks. I guess 35,000, good number? Or what is their goal? Like in turn, I know you'd love to sell them all out. But. The goal is to sell them all, for sure. And that'd be somewhere in the 46 to 47,000 range. That, you know, 65,000 is the capacity, but after you take off student tickets, visitor tickets, and, and player parents, et cetera, I think our number's 46 or 47,000. That's the total season tickets that we can sell. This is up about 6,000 from, from last year, from what I'm told. So, uh, yeah, good progress. Um, well, I think we're continuing to move forward with our, our plans here. Uh, you know, our idea from Jump Street really was to build the forever home of University of Miami football, a football operations center, much like you see at other uh, campuses around the country. So we're, we're well on our way moving forward with that. Uh, we're going to start and have started in kind of a silent phase our fundraising for for that project, and it's going incredibly well. Um, so uh, I think as the fall unfolds, we'll have uh, a little bit more of a public-facing focus on that, a little opening for where that's, that's going to go. Uh, but rest assured, that is priority one that we're working on. Um, we, we found some, some space you know, here on campus to be able to do that. Uh, it's, it's important that we utilize the facility that we're standing in, the Carol Sofer Indoor Facility, as well as expanding it to, uh, uh, to a full field uh, circumstance. So lots going on right now and feel really energized about where it's, where it's headed. Do you have a timeline, a break ground, timeline? Not yet, not yet. I hope that we have that really soon. Um, a, lot of, a lot of moving parts with, with building you know, on, a, on a campus, especially a campus that's that has a number of buildings ongoing as well. So, uh, not a timeline yet, but soon. You, know, you and Marta Cristobal essentially started this journey together with the way the timeline worked out. So, what have been your impressions about the way he's built the staff and the way the football operations have been running? I couldn't be happier. I mean, you know, Mario's a, he, he's a pro. I mean, he's done this before. He's, He's been a, a head coach at a couple of different places, certainly one that's akin to a, a Power Five here at the University of Miami. He's a native son, he played here. Uh, so he knows a lot about this, this organization and how we're trying to evolve it. Uh, we talk very, very frequently about you know, things that are moving on in his program, how administratively we can help make that, make that happen and make that happen for him, kind of remove obstacles. And that's what administrators do. We try to remove obstacles for all of our coaches to be able, and student athletes, to be successful. The size of the staff, just looking out to how many different support staff and coaches are recruiting, just, can you kind of give us a sense of how much the football staff has grown since you've been here? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's gotten bigger. I mean, we have more quality control people, more uh, analysts uh, than we've had before. Football operations has grown a little bit. But that's not unique to the University of Miami. That's the that, that's what's happened in college football over the last five to seven years. I mean, staffs have gotten bigger. Um, so you know, I think that we'll continue to make sure that it's right sized here for what we need uh, at the University of Miami. So 
uh, Mario and I continue to have those conversations as to where do we need to put our resources for this program to continue to move forward. I want to ask you about the hire of Alonzo Highsmith, just his role, what you've seen from him these first few months he's been here. Well, you know, Alonzo, um, it, it was funny, even before I got here, Alonzo and I had had conversations, and he came up in the winter time. We had a chance to sit down with Mar Mario, Alonzo, and myself. It took a little while to get him here, and but I think he's had a tremendously positive impact, you know, within the program, both inside this building and then outside as well. Alonzo's a very uh, a well known individual in South Florida. So I think we're going to utilize him as we go through the fundraising opportunities for our uh, football operations center, as well as he being a great sounding board for Mario, just understanding you know, how uh, you know, player evaluation and things of that nature, as well as being another set of eyes as it relates to the day to day operation of the football program. He's also part of our senior staff. I want to make that clear because that was really important for Mario to come here, or not for Mario, for Alonzo to come here and also see the other side of it, the administrative side. So when we meet every every Tuesday, Alonzo is part of our senior staff meeting. So he gets to hear things that are going on throughout the department. We get to hear things that are going on within the football program so the communication level continues to rise. I want to ask you just a big picture football question. Like, obviously the it appears like two super conferences are, are coming together. Just your thoughts on where maybe college football is going, how you feel like the ACC and Miami of course kind of fit into that trajectory. Sure, I mean that's a, that's a great question and uh, we can all throw a dollar into a pot here and try to figure out exactly where that's going to go over the next few years. Um, but I will tell you that you know, the, the the ACC, and we're a proud member of the ACC, how are we going to get better as a conference? I mean, it's well known, we have a grant of rights, our TV contract goes through 36. Uh, we need to do things within the conference that allow our members uh, to continue to be competitive. And those are the things that we're working on right now uh, with our league office. Uh, I can't give you details as to what that's going to be because the plans are still moving forward. Uh, but you see the SEC and where, where they've moved forward. You see the Big Ten and where they've moved forward. Uh, I think it's time now for the ACC to really look in and see where we can, we can take the next step within our league, whether it's you know, staying within the, uh, the number of teams that we have right now um, or, or expanding it. So our presidents and the league office in Greensboro continue to work on that uh, quite vigorously. Dan, would you UN have interest in possibly exploring, you know, the Big Ten or the Southeastern Conference if, if one of those conferences were, were, you know, interested in you guys? Well, you know, right now it, it's a circumstance where we, we have a grant of rights with the ACC. And until something changes along those lines, that's, that's a, 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 lot of, um, it's a lot of work going down a path that probably at this time can't, can't happen just because of the legalities. And the other thing I wanted to ask you is uh, the like Hard Rock Stadium mm -hmm. situation. Uh, just your thoughts on playing there. And I know we've talked before about exploring. I know you're open to exploring anything. So as far as playing closer to campus, there have been some renderings that have come out recently. Have you delved into that at all? You know, we have we have a great relationship with Hard Rock Stadium. That's that's first and foremost. I mean, they they really help us. With, with our program, and we're very proud to play there. We have, uh, I think, 10 or 11 more years on a, on a contract that we have with them. Um, so our focus right now is not as much where we play those seven games a year. Our focus is on the 358 days a year that our student athletes are here, getting instruction, having nutrition, weight room, sports medicine. We're focusing on that right now, not where we might be able to play. Let's do two more for Dan, please. You, where, where, you came, where, is, where, where is this university? Where you coming from? A bigger, bigger it's in Coral Gables. <laughs> where, where are you guys on that front? Um, competing with bigger schools with more money? Where are you guys right now? You mean, where do we compare with yeah. them? Yeah. You know, I think we're a little bit behind, you know, as it relates to that. But that's, that's okay, because that gives us an opportunity to, to do things uh, in 2022-23 to make it right for the University of Miami. 
I gotta tell you, all of these buildings that have been built around the country, you can't pick up one you know, in Athens, Georgia and put it in Austin, Texas. They don't fit. It has to be what is right for your program, what's right for your geography. So the amount of work that you do on the front end to make sure that it, it fits your community, your university, that's the, that's the real, that's the fun part and that's probably the most difficult part as well. Do you think you sure you have enough resources for all this before, you, before they hire you and, and Mario and all the staff? So there's a question for Miami that happens right now. It seems like you have to you now that you're involved in it. Yeah, I, I haven't found anything that is, has taken me away from that, you know, the, the idea that the resources are here. Now, let's be clear, we have to go out and raise some money in, in this community, and we have to go out and raise some money with people who've been a, a, a part of our program to one level. We may need to kick them up a notch to get to, get to the next level and have those dollars to be able to put together the bricks and mortar. But there's been nothing over the six months that I've been here, six months plus, that has dissuaded me from the fact that, yes, that can happen. And we, we have the opportunity to move forward.